Hi, I'm Alistair, and about five years ago, I made a video about these Skylander light core figures, which light up when you place them on the base reader. And when you take them apart, what you find inside is an antenna and an RFID chip, almost exactly the same as you'd find in one of these RFID tags, together with a little bit of additional circuitry that powers the LED. So when you bring a figure within range of an RFID reader, the electric field induces a current in the circuit that both lights the LED and also powers the RFID chip, which then enables the tag ID to be read so that the reader can determine which figure has been placed. And when I first discovered this, I thought this would be a pretty useful to use this same design in other RFID props. So in an escape room, when players place the relic that has an RFID tag in its base in the correct spot, it would light up as a kind of feedback mechanism. But I ended up not really using it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it would be easy to associate the LED lighting up with meaning that the correct item had been placed, but that would be misleading. All it means is that an item has been brought within range of the RFID reader. It doesn't identify or discriminate between tags or imply anything about whether it was the right item that had been placed. It lights up every single time. And even worse than that, I find it doesn't always even imply that the tag can be read. All it means is that the circuit has received enough energy to power the LED, but it might still be too far away from the reader to be able to register the backscattered interference pattern and decode the tag. So you can see that the, the LED starts to light at about that distance. But these readers use the uh, ISO 1443 standard and that typically only has a read range for the RFID of about one or two centimetres. For most new RFID projects I now use um, PN5180 boards which have a much greater read range but are not compatible. But I still liked the core ID of LEDs that could be passively illuminated. So you could have a portable, unpowered item which magically lights up within, uh, when brought within range of a transmitting coil. And it doesn't have to use RFID at all. So that brings me on to the topic of this video, which is these wireless inductively powered LEDs. Now, these are not new or advanced technology, but they're one of those things that if you haven't seen them before, they are pretty cool. And they're really very simple. Here I have a transmitter. It's just a coil of copper wire which is being driven by this little driver circuit. Now the driver has an oscillator driving a MOSFET that switches power to the coil at a frequency of around 220 kilohertz. And that oscillating electric current passing through the coils creates a magnetic field which fluctuates in strength. Now attached to the wireless LEDs we've also got coils of wire and when they're exposed to that changing magnetic field that induces an alternating electric current in this circuit which powers the LED. Now you can buy these LEDs pre-made from places like AliExpress but to show you just how simple this circuit is you can actually make one of these yourself using just two components. Here I've got an inductor, so that is just coils of wire inside this little shrink wrap here. And here I've got a totally regular LED. If I just touch the legs of the LED onto the inductor like that and bring it down into the field of the coil here, you can see it lights up. Now because this is an alternating current, I can actually attach the LED either way round and it will still light up. I'm only using uh, half of the wave that's being induced here, I'm just using the positive half. I could actually take another LED and attach it the other way round and use the, uh, the full amount of energy that's being received by the circuit. But that's really how simple it is. Now you've seen here I've got various different coloured ones and actually these are all slightly different uh, sizes as well. Some of these are 5mm and some of these are 4mm coils. So to, just to give you a little bit of um, a practical demonstration of the performance of them, here I've chosen three different colours. I've got white, red and green 
and these are four millimeter coils on the left hand side and these are five millimeter coils on the right and as I lift these up away from the coil you'll see that the ones on the left hand side those ones that are the uh, smaller diameter coil go off first and that's at a height of about just over 10 centimeters and as I continue to uh, lift these up the white one goes off next then the red is pretty dim here it's actually the green LED stays lit for the longest right until that is almost 40 centimeters uh, above the height of the coil that that green LED is still saying so well, that seems to be the um, most effective transfer of energy there you can see as I move it to the side as well uh, the strongest part is right in the middle of the coil as you pass over the edges of the coil it goes off but then they actually do light on the outside as well now you might just think that having the greater diameter of the coil is always going to be more effective it's not quite that straightforward um, here I've got another coil so this coil here is 20 centimeter diameter here I've got a much smaller coil if I take these same LEDs again and lift them up you'll see that now the larger size LEDs are actually turning off at about the same time they're now all lasting for a distance of about 10 centimeters so it's not simply a case of getting the larger coil size it's about having one that is tuned to the um, transmitter circuit but if you want to get the best performance in terms of simply the most wow factor to use in a prop like an escape room I would recommend using the green LEDs the five millimeter green LEDs and a 20 centimeter coil diameter that seems to be the most effective I've seen the other thing to mention is that um, the way that the induction into the coil works is the coils are best to be axis aligned so you've got the coils in the same orientation etc as you turn the LED on its side you'll see that the light goes off as less of the energy is able to be transferred so if when they're completely at right angles to each other you won't get the LED lit at all but then as you begin to twist it like that you'll see them lit up so if you were to have let's say um, you know a cube or some sort of object like that and you've got these mounted on the sides know that the edges that were uh, completely at right angles to the transmitter coil won't light up at all you might want to deliberately kind of offset them slightly so that they'll always receive some kind of power but that's something you can uh, kind of play around with generally these are very easy to use uh, they're very cheap you can make them yourself if you want to using discrete components like this or you can buy them um, you, you'll always have to make that decision to offset the convenience against the cost factor but uh, yeah they're, they're pretty neat give them a play and let me know what you think of them